Hi guys, so in this video, we're gonna be discussing table views. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give you a brief introduction into what table views are and how important they are to iOS applications. And then later on in the next bit of the video, we'll discuss how we can actually set this up in our current Xcode project. So just to start off, what are table views? So table views are basically com is a control that Apple offers, which allows us to basically present content in a list now you're probably wondering why would I ever want to use this application, this um, control, like what is, how, what's the purpose? Is it even important? Well, it's actually really important because a lot of the applications you use in your day to day are actually built off lists. So if you have an iPhone with you right now, if you open up the mail app, for example, or messages or WhatsApp, you'll see that a lot of these apps, it's a list of content and nine times out of 10, they either use table views or collection views. Now they're both very similar, but in this video, we're just gonna focus on UI table view and in later videos, we'll focus on UI collection views. So just to give you a visual example, if I was to basically just show you this now, for example, this is just a really basic app. So imagine it's a simple app with just a simple heading. What could we do here to basically, you know, show different bits of content. So let's imagine a client says, or you have an, a client says to you, or you have an idea that you want to show like a dynamic list of items. So you want to show a yellow cell, a green cell and a red cell. Well, what you could actually do is use a UI table view cell and using the UI table views with UI table view cells, you can actually differentiate what you want to happen on each individual cell. So this is how you have dynamic content within apps. So you probably realize if you use some apps such as Twitter, where you can basically scroll through your feed and you see a, mi a mixture of messages, images, videos, and even quoted tweets. This is all possible by using table views. And the way table views work is that once a cell is on the screen, it's presented to the user. But once a cell is taken off the screen, it's basically removed from memory. And the reason why they do this is because it's to make the uh, view and to make the application more efficient and perform better. So we'll discuss in upcoming videos how to basically make our table view cells more efficient. But for now, let's get started with just setting up a dummy basic table view. So the first thing that we need to do just to create some nice little organization is create a new folder here. Uh, so new group and then view controller. So this is where we put all our view controller controllers or I should say controllers and then what we're gonna do is hold to click right click on it new file Coco touch class next and we're gonna change this here to UI view controller if it isn't set to that already for you and then we're just gonna create a new view controller called chance view controller just like that and then what we're going to do is hit next and then hit create and then that's created that. So we're going to give this view controller a background color. So we're just going to say self dot view dot background color. And again, you can choose any color. I'm just going to say system dot blue this time. And then what we're going to do is use this view controller rather than the one that was generated for us by Xcode. So you just right, just copy this. So double click on this. Uh, if you're using a um, Mac keyboard, Command C. Um, so just copy it, or right click copy, and then um, scene delegate, and then just paste it on here. And then we're gonna delete this file view controller because we don't need it no more. So move to the trash, and then we're gonna run our app just to see if that's all good. Cool, so you can see now we've got our new view controller here. So the next thing we need to do is we need to basically set up a table view. So we're just gonna set up a dummy table view. So if we just go into the view controller here at the top, just to keep things clean, I'm gonna write mark and then UI. So what this does, this mark, it basically lets us separate um, our code in the file and you can basically track it here so you can see here I can see UI here so I can jump to it if I had a big file and what we're going to do now is we're actually going to create our lazy loaded table view so I'm just going to type in private lazy file table view 
as our type UI table view, and then we're just gonna do equals and then uh, parentheses and then do this and then let table view is equal to UI table view and then TV dot translate false. TV dot um, row height is equal to UI table view dot automatic dimension and then TV dot estimated row height is equal to 44 and then TV dot separator style is equal to none and then TV dot register and then we want to use the register function we're going to make sure that we use the one where the first parameter is any is any class and then for cell reuse identifier so the second one in the list and then we're just going to type in here ui table view cell dot self and then cell id it's just going to be cell and then we'll go return return tv like cool sweet so just to go into a bit of detail in terms of what this is what we just created so we just created a lazy loaded um table view so what does that mean so lazy loaded means that this is actually only going to um compile and build this table view when the application calls this um, property so the reason why we do this is because it's more um, efficient and helps with build time so inside of that what we've done is we create a table view and then we set the translate auto resizing mask into constraints to false. Now, this is really, really important. If you ever build views programmatically, this always needs to be set to false. If you forget to do this, then your auto layout isn't going to work, which is what we're going to move on to in a minute. We set the background color to clear. The row height is going to be automatic dimension. The estimated row height is going to be 44. So the row height automatic dimension means that when we basically build this, um, you can see that the sizes of the cells are dynamic, so they're not all the same size. It will stretch depending on the content inside of it, as you can see. So they're all going to be different heights. The estimated row height is going to be 44. So this is like saying this is what the minimum height is going to be. The separated style is going to be none because we don't want any lines in between each of the cells. And we're just going to register a table view cell here like so. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually add this table view onto the screen, which is what we're going to do next. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do is just delete this generate code. And to separate this, I like to use extensions. So what I'm going to do is go write a private extension on the view controller. And then we're going to create a function called setup. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call this setup in the load view lifecycle function. So let's go create another mark here called a life cycle. Yep. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use this load view. And then we're going to call a function setup. So the reason why we use load views is it's just more efficient to call and do any sort of like UI. Um, set up stuff in load view compared to view to load um, in terms of like auto layer and whatnot so it just is uh, quicker so what we're going to do here is we're going to basically add this table view onto the screen using auto layer so self dot view dot add sub view and we're going to add the table view and then what we're going to do is we're going to activate some constraints to add this onto the screen. So we're just going to do nslayout.constraint.activate. And then we're now just going to basically add our constraints here. So what we want to do is we basically want to pin this table view to the top, bottom, left, right of the safe area layout guide on the screen. So in order to do that, let's do this now. So if we just type in table view dot top anchor so that's the top and then we're going to constrain this equal to so we're not going to actually add any spacing which is what this constant means so this will basically might add like you can type in eight here so actually push the table view eight down 
from the top, but we're not going to do that. So we're just going to pin this right to the top. I'm going to say self dot view dot <clears throat> safe area layout guide. Oh, safe area layout guide dot top anchor. And then <clears throat> just to save time, I'm just going to copy this, paste it four times. I'm just going to change each one of these. So we're just going to change this to bottom. And then we're going to change this to bottom. And we'll change this to leading, which is left. Leading and then trailing, which is right. So trailing is right, leading is left. Cool. So what we're then going to do is we're actually going to see some rows in the table view. So what we need to do next is we need to actually set up um, our data source with the table view. So the data source is literally just um, what it says. It literally is a delegate um, or protocol that basically allows you to basically return the data that you want to see on the screen here. In our case, we're just going to use some dummy data. And you can see here it's complaining saying that like, oh, we can't assign UI table view data source to chance view controller. So what it's basically saying is that we need to actually implement the protocol functions of this delegate. So what I'm just going to do here is create another extension. I'm just going to write mark. And then we're just going to do this where we do UI table view data source. And then we're just going to type in here extension on chance view controller and then UI table view data source. And you probably notice that I didn't actually type in the keyword private here. It's because you can't do that with UI table view data source. So it just needs to be internal. And then now you go see it's actually, the error's gone away here, but we've now got a new error here saying that, oh, you need to implement the protocol functions. So we're gonna do that. So if you just hit fix, so these are, these are must do. So you must implement these two functions when you're working with UI table view data source. So for the section number of rows and sections, this is the number of rows that you're gonna see on the screen here. Just for this purposes of this um, dummy, we're just gonna return three. And cell for row at index path is the cell that you see at each row. So at row zero, one, two, three, what cell do you want to basically present? So in this case, we're just going to use our dummy cell here that we registered, but we're just going to give it a different um, background color so you can see the different cells. So what I'm just going to do here is I'm just going to type in here, cell table view dot DQ reusable cell with identifier four index path so we need to use this one and i'll explain a bit later why so cell and then index path and then what we're going to do here is depending on the index uh, we're basically going to change the color of that cell so we're just going to put a switch statement in here and we're just going to say index path dot row so if it's the first item then we're going to set the background color to uh, let's just say system dot teal and then um, if it's the second one we're gonna set it to system dot uh, gray and if it's the last one then we're gonna set it to uh, system dot uh, pink and then default so if it's a match any of these cases, so if that if the, the number in this row is not zero, one, or two, then we're just not gonna do anything. So if you're new to programming, you probably realize that I didn't start from one, two, three. Programming actually starts in from zero. So you can see it's actually starting from zero, one, two, three. So zero represents one, one represents two, two represents three. So the easy way to think about it is that whatever number you're on does subtract one. And then what we need to do here, like it's saying, is we need to return the table view cell. So return cell. Okay, cool. 
So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to run this and see what we get. So let's run this now. Cool. And as you can see, you can see our cell. So our first cell is teal, our second cell is gray, and our third cell is pink. So what we need to do now is we actually need to create a model so we can actually see these cells on the screen, which is what we're going to do now. So join me in the next video, like, share, and subscribe, and let's get this model into the app.